Um, so as Hogger just said, we're going to record uh, today so that, and we're going to publish a video so that you can refer to it later on. And at the same time, uh, later today or tomorrow, we'll send an information email uh, with any links to anything we discussed today so that you don't need to go and be crazy taking notes and whatever. Hopefully everything will be sent to you afterwards and um, you can refer to it afterwards. So you can just concentrate on listening and asking questions. Okay, so, um, so we're here because NCI has finally announced that going, I mean, they haven't really announced it. Uh, in case you have, haven't noticed, you haven't received any email from NCI uh, telling you about it. Uh, they have told uh, us at the scheme managers meeting um, they should send some information or pretty soon. Um, but they were pretty uh, adamant that they were going to start on the 17th of May to um, start automatically deleting uh, unused data from the scratch file system. So that's quite a change to what we've been used to for these years. So we decided to put a bit of information and refresh some of the information we have for you so you can better prepare for it. Um, and so today we will start with presenting a bit what we have, what NCI is planning to do, and how we suggest is the best way to prepare for you. And then we'll go through a Q&A where everyone can discuss, uh, ask questions and see uh, what's the best way forward. Um, so yeah, if there's anything we present today that's not clear, not fully resolved, we'll follow through via email or anything uh, with more information. So uh, hopefully everyone will be able to prepare uh, fully. Okay, so, um, yes, so, no, it's fine. So to start off, um, the first point of information for us, usually it's the CMS wiki. So we've, uh, we've dusted off some old information pages that we had and updated some information. So I'm just going to show you quickly what we've done. Uh, and then you can go into more details afterwards. So we have a page that presents all the storage uh, at NCI on GADI. Um, so the what the change means is that now you really need to think of the different file systems of GADI as a hierarchy of file systems, each with a different use case. So you have the home that is small, is good for uh, how to reproduce files like analysis codes. Scratch, uh, think of it as a temporary space. It's good for data you're using a lot, uh, but as soon as you're not using it, you should think of moving that data somewhere else or uh, deleting it if, you're not use it if you don't need it anymore. You have GData, which is a disk space as well, and it's more permanent. Um, so it can be used for keeping, uh, keeping data for a long term, even if you're not accessing it uh, frequently. And then you have the tape space, uh, which we refer to as MDSS or mass data. Uh, and this is good as a backup of important files or an archiving system. So I want to really insist on the backup function of it uh, because no, because GData, for example, is not backed up. And so if a file, if a disk uh, breaks on GData, you are losing your files unless you have a backup of them that you've done yourself. Um, so at NCI, there's only home uh, that is actually backed up. Anything else is not. Oh, home and MDSS. MDSS is backed up. There's a, there are two type systems actually. Okay. Um, so the home is relatively small, as I said, and uh, is best for analysis uh, code, for example. That's where you arrive when you log in into um, Gadi, 
that you have at your home. Scratch. So as I said, I've put a nice warning. Uh, this is a temporary space. Um, and remember that with automatic deletion, every user is responsible for their own data. So you are responsible to learn about your own, to learn about the automatic deletion, deletion and how to deal with it. Uh, there's a bit of information on how to use Scratch. I will get back to that a bit after. Um, it just tells you that this can, how you can get it. You can get it from uh, Gadi, but not already and things like that. Um, it is a shared space. I'm guessing everyone here knows that. So um, please make sure you monitor your usage. Uh, then you have the GData space, which is also a disk space. And this one doesn't have any automatic deletion. So it's good for more long-term um, usage. Um, again, it is a shared space. Monitor your usage. We'll give you information on how to do that. Um, also some information on how getting additional storage is pretty hard on GData. So it's really a question of managing your space um, and monitoring. And then there's the tape. I know a lot of people, uh, most people don't like it and tend to use it as a black hole for stuff they need to keep but don't really care about. Yes, Paul? Hey, uh, thanks. So all these NCI-file-report and NCI account, like, is there a list of these commands somewhere? Like, these missed, I kind of, yeah. Um, monitoring commands for to see how much usage is. I must say, now that I know them, I don't remember, but there must be something on the user guide of NCI, but I, I haven't checked. So, unless someone knows of, of a place with, where they are, uh, we can check and we can let you know by email. Thank you. Uh, Claire, I can add something to that. I think they will be um, on the blog that we're going to mention later. Yeah. There's okay. various examples of these commands because it's not always easy to find detailed explanation on the NCI user guide. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah, for the tape, um, most people use it a bit as a black hole. They're told that they need to keep their data around for seven years for legal reasons. So they just put it there or they go away and put it there without asking themselves much questions. Um, but it can be more useful than that. Uh, it can be used as a backup. It can be used for data you know you might need again, but not in a long, not in some time, so you might put it there. And, um, so we've, we've tried to put some information on how best to use this system uh, so that it's not a black hole and can actually be useful for putting data and retrieving the data after. Um, hopefully um, that's enough. If you need more information, we are always happy to, to put more there um, if you want to. I'm just mentioning it because with Scratch becoming more temporary, you may find that using the tape more will be more will be more and more required. So it might be something you need to to learn to use uh, more effectively. Okay. And after we've put a few use cases for the various file systems. Um, Adam, did you want to talk about it? So I, th I thought we were going to yeah, go over the NCI things first, but uh, maybe I so missed it. Um, sure, we can. Yeah, no ways. Okay, so this was a, sorry. This was uh, there's a four different 
file systems and NCI. And so right now we're just going to jump to what the automatic deletion is going to look like from NCI. And this, Hoke, do you want to present? Do you want to? Yeah, to I, I would like to present, yes. Do you want to share your screen or do you want me to? Yeah, I think, I, I think I'd like to share my screen. Um, so, um, yes, so the background is that, that, that NCI have always considered um, the scratch file system that was originally called short file system on, on Raj and, and the older computers. That was always meant to be temporary and uh, just for people work, work, working with their data right at this point. Um, but we've never used it this way. Um, and um, they are now since, since Gaddis inception, they've said, okay, now we're going to clamp down on this and eventually we'll delete all old data. And um, this eventual is now here. Um, so what will happen is, um, is that um, files that haven't been accessed in a long time will first be placed into um, a 14 day, what they call quarantine. Um, and that basically takes them away from you um, and already ma makes projects that would access these files uh, crash so that you notice that something's going on. But the quarantine only lasts for 14 days. And if uh, after, this, after these 14 days, um, unless you have uh, restored them, they will be permanently and irrevocably deleted. Um, and once, once a file is in this quarantine, it starts to get a, quite a bit of a hassle to get it back out. Um, for starters, only the owner, only the owner of the file can request um, the restoration of the file. Um, not their supervisor, not their lead CI, not the CMS team, only the person who's, who, only the owner can do this. Um, I think there's still a little bit of ambiguity, but it seems that um, each file restoration must be requested individually. So if they've deleted um, a directory with a few hundred files, you might have to um, request hundred files to be uh, um, restored. And also um, the restoration project itself um, seems to be um, a queued job. That is, um, it will be queued, it will be, it will be waiting in some queue before it gets executed. And if it wait, and if it, um, and this, this queuing of the job does not um, stop the 14 day timer. So um, at worst, if worst comes to worst, um, your job is still queued when the file is deleted. So, um, I think it's a good idea to always make sure that your files uh, don't even go into quarantine, um, but uh, and and that you know what you do with it before they do be, before that happens. Um, I have a few. Well, yeah, can you accept? So I, I was I was about to get to this. What access means? Um, so put this out of the way. So um, if I go to uh, so um, the go for see. the expire for example the expire.json file it's a fairly new file so I don't think uh, that what they're looking for is the a time um, each Linux system has three um, for each file they have three timestamps. The C time, the, file, the time when, um, when the file was created, uh, the M um, or the modified time and the A time, the access time. And the access time you can see by using the ls minus lu command. So um, here, this is the time that um, I have last accessed this file, which was um, yesterday, oh, yeah, yesterday. Um, because I only, only created it yesterday, but if I if I just um, just open it, and now you can see that the that the a time has already changed. 
So I don't need to modify it, I just need to look at it um, to, to, to change the A time. Um, now, some of you might be thinking, oh, that's easy. I just write a script that touches all my files once a month and looks at all my files. Um, it would probably be easy to write such a, such a script. Um, I'm fairly confident that NCI will not look favorable upon anyone found to do such a thing. So um, please go, go with the intended process and that is um, keep files on scratch only for a short, only as long as you really need them to. And if you need them longer, um, think about moving them to GData or MDSS or mo moving them to your own computer, downloading them to your own computer. Um, so what will happen? Now the first data time is um, May 17th. So May 17th is the first time this uh, process will actually run. And at that point, it looks for files that are older than 365 days. So all the files that have an A time of 17th May 2021 or earlier will then be placed into quarantine. And then um, if, if, not, if not restored, those files will, will then be gone by the, end, by, by the end of May. So two weeks, two weeks later. Then the second round is on, the, on June 7th. And this is the first time they, they run it with the 100 days. So on this, on this day, they, um, they look for all files that have an access day since, um, I think that's uh, February 27th. So that's 100 days before June 7th. Um, every, all files that, are, um, that have an A time of, of February 27th or earlier um, will then be put, placed into quarantine and uh, deleted 14 days later. And then on the 21st of June, the full system will go live. And then every day from that point on, every day it will look for files that are older than 100 days and uh, put them on quarantine um, and delete them 14 days after that. So that will be then, then the system is fully operational. Um, they have given us a tool to interact with this. Um, there's this NCI file expiry, uh, yeah, file expiry. Um, and it has basically three modes that you can use it to, to uh, monitor this thing. The first thing is the, um, is the list warnings. Um, list warnings means um, it shows you all the files. Olga? Yes? Could you please just make that a little bit bigger, I think? Uh, really yeah, that's... The, the problem is it's a, a PDF, so it's... You know what, I'll do it, I'll do it on the... Um, I'll just run on the project uh, W40. Um, so this will simply give you a list of all the files that are likely to, um, that, are, that, that face um, quarantine and deletion within the next 14 days. So um, you see here, this, um, this file, for example, here, um, will face, <laughs> will, quote unquote, face um, quarantine uh, in March this year. So you can already see that um, this script only looks for the 100 days. So it doesn't, it doesn't take into, in, into account the staged introduction of the system. It says that if the system was already running, then on the, third, uh, on, on the, on the 2nd of March, this file would have been uh, put into quarantine. Um, it looks up to 14 days ahead and um, gives you this list. Uh, you can also put it, you can also turn it into, um, into a JSON output. Uh, into JSON output if you want to, if you want to read it in, uh, for example, with a Python script or something like that, um, that's a little bit easier to read for, for, for a computer system, but for human, for human consumption. For human consumption, you'd probably have something like this. Um, and this is the only thing that we've been able to test so far because the system isn't up and running. So we don't really know what happens uh, when the file is in quarantine, but there is um, 
there is the list uh, uh, quarantine. And that gives you um, uh, a list of files that are currently in quarantine for you. Um, apparently, obviously, this is still empty because there is no the, there are, the system isn't up and running yet. Um, but this is here; yeah, it gives you the ID, and that is the ID that you require to restore it. Um, and it also gives you the path um, and and when it expired. And then, if you if you find one of your files. Um, Quarantine that you still quarantine that you still need. There is um, there is the recover command, um, and that tell and this is how you can tell your system to um, how to request files to be released from quarantine again. And uh, the UUID I suspect is whatever is under in this uh, column, and path is whatever is in this column. Um, and yeah, you, you need to, to request this there. Um, once you've requested it, uh, you, there is um, status, uh, which can show you um, what is the status of the file uh, um, recovery process. But um, we haven't been able to test anything of this at all, because obviously we don't have access to this. And we don't have, and there are no files that are currently being um, uh, in quarantine. So um, what, uh, what NCI kindly requests is that you actually, um, that you actually uh, become a little bit more proactive. And um, if you, first up, you should run this NCI file expiry regularly. So at least once a week, I prob I'm going to probably going to run it at least once a week to just see what's going to happen. And, um, even if you notice that files that, that are listed for expiry, um, that you don't need them anymore. Um, I mean, if, if, you, if you already notice, just delete them anyway, so that you don't have to, that you don't have to deal with this at, at all. Um, uh, yeah, we should probably improve our, all, improve our uh, data hygiene, um, keep what we, only what we want to keep and what we need to keep and know exactly where we want to keep it. Um, and uh, yes, this is this is the system. And um, by the way, this uh, this web page uh, will be part of the links that we'll send out later today. Um, and down here is this PDF that I've tried to show here that um, was unfortunately a little bit uh, small for my for my screen. Okay, and um, with this, I'm going to end my presentation. And there are a few quick chats. Uh, um, maybe we'll, we'll go to Aidan, a few use cases, and then after how to prepare, and then we can go through the questions afterwards. OK. Um, do you want to share your screen if you've got it there, Claire? Sure. No Um, yeah, can can you make it a little bit bigger? Yes. Cool. Um, yeah, so when we're preparing for this, uh, uh, one way we we're trying to find out ways to make it to provide you with, with information, and potentially one one way of doing that we thought was uh, some use cases or scenarios uh, to give you an idea about how you should be using these. Uh, how you should be using Scratch. So, uh, for example, if you data that you would keep on Scratch only might be, for example, if you're producing large amounts of temporary data that will delete, be deleted once analysis is completed. Um, that's a perfect use case for Scratch, and um, that's where you should keep. That's what you should use Scratch for. Absolutely. Uh, if you have data duplicated from another site um, or mass data, so in some cases some people have used. Uh, model outputs that were already archived on mass data and pulled them back down again and used them in their models. So that's a good example of something that would works well on Scratch uh, because you know you pull it down, you use it, and then even if it gets deleted, you can get it back again. You can put it back there again. But if you're using it regularly as input for models or analysis, uh, the access time will be constantly updated, and so it shouldn't it shouldn't be deleted unless you're not using it any longer. 
Um, the classic one is a temporary run directory for your simulation. So most simulations uh, configured to run and output their data uh, onto Scratch. This is Scratch is the most performant uh, file system uh, at, at NCI. It's designed for that use case. Uh, so that's definitely what you should do with it. Um, you should definitely run your models and output them to Scratch. It's what you do with that data afterwards that um, you know is some of these other use cases down below, and also you know temporary outputs from PBS and other log files and simulations and analyses is a good example of something that is perfectly fine on Scratch. Particularly if it gets deleted and you don't particularly care about it, then that's fine. Um, uh, another use case is keeping on on Scratch but migrating when you're finished. So uh, to GData um, or to offsite uh, locations or, or to the mass data store. So um, climate model output um, or other data that you're going to be analyzing and, and then archive um, you know, in a short time frame. So if you're producing, if you're doing some analysis or some model work and, uh, and you're going to be constantly accessing those files and, or, or whatever you do with them, it doesn't, you can do it within that 100 day expiry time, then that's fine. Um, uh, you can do what you need to do and then and then ar archive them or transfer them. Um, so if yeah, some people produce a huge number of figures, for example, and but only keep a few for the long term or for a for a um, for a paper, that's potentially another use case. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's the, a lot, some of the models that, that people, some of the use cases that people use most frequently or use the most amount of data are, are the long climate model runs. And some of these may take longer than, a, than the 100 day expiry date to even complete. So it's not even possible to analyze the data before the runs complete. So that's not a good use case um, to leave on scratch. So, so you're going to need to have some sort of automatic migration to G data, I would say for a lot of those cases. And that means that and, and if you are automatically uh, migrating data to GDA, then you want to delete it off scratch. Otherwise, you're going to have an absolute uh, cat, you know, um, uh, avalanche of, of NCI file expiry you know, warnings. And it's going to be very difficult for you to find the needle in the haystack of, of the stuff that you, you actually care about and might, might need to, um, that hasn't been backed up already. So that makes Scratch harder to use for some of those use cases, I would say. Um, and also um, uh, data that's being used, that's being produced for a community of, of users. So CMIP, Cordex, or the Cosmo outputs. And so no one knows when they're going to access them, uh, but they know that there's, you know, it's going to be accessed by a wide variety of people, but who knows when, then those aren't good use cases for storage on Scratch. Um, but and things that you you should create in home or GData directly is any code that you use, analysis code, potentially climate model and source codes, um, external packages that you've installed locally. So um, you know some software or or rather that that uh, you rely on. You can't let, you can't keep that in Scratch. It'll get deleted if you don't use it uh, frequently enough. And um, and just to make sure that people aren't getting the wrong idea, do not run climate models and output directly uh, to either home or God, God forbid, or GData. Um, that's what we call an anti-pattern. Um, GData isn't as fast as uh, Scratch and NCI will get quite annoyed uh, if you use it like that. Uh, it, will, it will degrade the performance of the system in general. So Scratch is designed for that use case and that should be used for that. If you can't keep it on scratch, then you have to have some system for moving it off there if you need to. So uh, hopefully that sort of gives you some idea about where you might fit in, in your use case. And if, and if there are other use cases, uh, then we're more than happy to put those in or to work up some idea of um, you know, a data pipeline if you, if you need some help. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, so I think that's it for presenting. Well, Paolo was going to do, Sorry? Just, wasn't Paolo just going to do a quick run through of yeah. the blog? Just a... Uh, no, no, okay, um, cool. Just say it's there. I was just saying, um, so presenting the different file systems, how the change, uh, what the change is. And so we're going to go through the how to prepare 
for it, which I guess is, uh, so for this, we've put a link on the home of the wiki, you know, Scratch Automatic File Deletion. Um, that gets you here to, we have some kind of a checklist of things we think, of a way we think it's the best to prepare for it. And here is the, uh, it's some additional links to additional information. As a description of the various file systems that NCI has at the storage page, we just um, went through a little bit. Um, so for the preparation, first, make sure you read the information provided by NTI. Uh, Hoger went through a little quickly, but make sure you have your own read through it. First, and then start by cleaning up both GData and Scratch. Uh, cleaning up also means delete, but it can be archiving either to tap outside of NTI if you can, uh, or moving from scratch to GData as you can. Uh, we recommend to clean up GData first because GData space in, tends to be a bit busy. So if, if you're all starting to move data from scratch to GData, uh, I'm guessing we'll hit uh, quota uh, issues very quickly. So start with GData and then go to scratch. Um, after, once you clean up as much as you think you can, uh, you can run the NTI file expiry um, command to, for, to get the, the list warnings. Here, uh, we're running it by project and this output, uh, put the output in a file so that it's easier for you to go through and see what's in it. Um, once you get this, check the output. If you find anything that's important there that's in the warnings, make sure you deal with it. That means putting it somewhere else, um, accessing it, I don't know. Uh, accessing it is probably a bad idea to do it because then a hundred days after you have to do it again. So what you want to do is really deal with it, in a, which means finding another place for it to be, to, to stay. Uh, once you've done this pair project you're a member of, we recommend you doing it a NTI file expiry list warnings without putting any projects so that the system will go through everything and it might pick up files you forgot that you own and uh, you've discovered that you discovered there. So uh, it's just, um, you know, fail safe uh, step. Okay, and so once you've done that, you're pretty much ready for May 17th. So all this should be done before May 17th, if possible, because that would be simpler for you. So it's relatively urgent. And then you can maybe rethink your data pipeline, um, which means uh, what are you going to do in, in the long term so that you don't leave data on scratch that you're not using. Um, how you're going to, to deal with your data. So that's where the use cases uh, Adam uh, described before um, are useful. This is also a blog as that can help you to ask you the questions, to ask yourself the right questions about your data, why you're producing the data, what, how you need it, what, what it's for and stuff like that. So go through the blog and have a look, have a think of what you're doing, um, and then might make things better. And then on the long term, you will need to manage your data under GData, but also Scratch, but also under GData more regularly because uh, people will need maybe more space there, uh, which might mean putting more things to tape, as I said at the beginning. So to help you with learning how to use the tape systems as a archiving data at NCI, it has information there as a blog as well as information about that. Um, if you need more information than that, we can provide you with more information. We haven't put 
any fancy magic commands because often the fancy magic commands can be tricky to use and can uh, provide uh, unwanted uh, results if uh, you don't understand the magic pudding. So, um, but yeah, uh, you're welcome to ask us questions and we can always give you more if uh, with explanations and for your use case um, as needed. Okay, um, I think that the end of what we wanted to present today, um, and it's, I mean, I'm happy to go through the blog a little bit, but I think it's better if you just go through it and have a look at it and, and see how it can help you. Um, can I just say one thing about a blog? Because it was asked before, uh, in the blog, you're gonna find also an extensive list of tools and comments that can help you. Um, generally with your data workflow. And there's another page which was put there in the chart accounting at NCI, which has even more details about some of these comments. And that's also linked in the blog. Um, and we'll also be tapping a few people on the shoulder who have got very large GData usage um, and asking them to uh, try and clean that up specifically. Um, so you've been warned. That we are. Um, okay, so maybe the first thing I'll do is go back to the chat. There were some questions there we didn't answer, and I know that. Um, so don't touch your farm. Um, I mean, that's your own responsibility. Uh, but NCI said they will monitor files and um, they have a system in place, and if they think you're doing, you're trying to escape the, the scratch purging, uh, they are not going to be happy and are going to let you know about it. So I would not recommend it, and you'll never get us to tell you any magic command of how to do it or what to do. <laughs> Uh, Wilmer asked, will we get a notification when a file goes into quarantine? No, explicitly no. not. I asked NCI about that and they they were, they had thought they considered and decided not to because they decided that you would get ab an absolute blizzard of of, uh, of warnings and, it, and you'd either ignore them or just get annoyed by them. So they are explicitly not doing that. Um, about more location in Jetata, no. <laughs> the short answer is no. They are going to increase the default allocation for Scratch, but unfortunately, I believe all of the projects we're using are already have already a bigger allocation than the default allocation, so it's not going to improve anything for us. Um, so there is no more space coming in, and that's typically why I've put so much emphasis on using tape and learning to use it. Um, so they um, they actually said at one stage that their their goal was for Scratch to have no quotas, only safety quotas they called them, but they seem to have walked back from that a bit. Um, no, they still consider them a bit a safety quota. It will be a lot easier to to increase the quota on Scratch, uh, but yeah, they still need one quota for for the system to work. Yeah, I just saw that they said if you asked for 10 terabytes and you had a small allocation, anyway, it, it sounded a little like a bit lower than safety quotas to me, but anyway, whatever. To a certain extent, the larger the quota, the more trouble you're going to get yourself into anyway. So, you know. Um, in theory, GData is, is, has, is somewhere where you can ask for, we have this space on the HH5 for special projects, draw, for example, um, but that is maxed out at the moment and that's something that we're trying to get, trying to find some space on there. Um, but that's only temporary, as, you know, relatively temporary as well. But. Yeah. So I was going to say that in theory, we we do not need increase of GData. We just need GData to be clean up or really old data. And, you know, we, we kind of aware just out of experience when we had to transfer things, but there's a lot of there, which is, um, leftovers or sometimes, you know, simulation that didn't work. And um, 
yeah, it's it's hard. It's easy to forget, but you know, it's necessary to to go back and check where you go there, kind of regularly. Ellie asks, "Is there a storm storage limit to tape?" Okay, theoretically, yes. <laughs> So yeah, there used to be one. There's no air contain system uh, on tape anymore. I don't even. I'm not even sure NCI has an air contain system to for them to to know how much storage you have on tape. So, and I have asked NCI several times, can we use do can we have more tape or whatever? And the answer was always, well, yeah, we'll see whatever. And so there's no for your own purposes. There's no storage limit on tape. Just use it. Um, if anyone gets uh, tapped on the shoulder, it won't be you, it will be me. So don't worry, go about it. <laughs> um, I've, I've been able to get information from NCI by, um, by putting a query into NCI help and they've, they've told me how much storage quota I've had. And I think there was a, there is some command or other to tell you how much you actually have stored as well. Yes, you can know you, you know you can know how much you have stored there. Um, it's all on the archiving data at NCI and probably the blog as well. Uh, it it tells you all, all those comments. Um, but um, the, the quota is not enforced anyway. Okay. So we have we have several projects where we are over quota on tap anyway, and we've put more data on there and nobody has said anything. And and for my discussions uh, with with NCI. They much prefer if you use step than if you ask for more disk or anything. So, uh, yeah, for for the purposes here, consider there's no there's no. Don't worry too much about. It. Okay. So, are you there, Paul? You, Paul Spence, are you gone? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Can you say what do you mean by a log of deleted data? What? Well, like if they're going to delete our data, I don't want to email about it, but I'd like there to be like a list of all the files they deleted on me. So at least I can know like what happened. That doesn't seem Interesting. to be too... We can ask, I guess. Yeah. Why don't they just put a log file in there and say, hey, this is all the crap we just wiped from you. <laughs> well, I guess I guess they didn't see the... They, don't, they didn't necessarily see the point because once it's deleted it's deleted there's no way at all to get it back well just from my own peace of mind i mean i got <laughs> well, we can everywhere <laughs> i don't know it's just yeah it seems polite i mean you can make a listing of everything that's there and then make a listing later and see what's not there anymore i mean i can, <laughs> I can let you know how to do that well then i wouldn't know who to blame maybe i did it Anyway, it's not, it's not the most useful comment, but it seems like a reasonable thing. I don't think it's too complicated to write a script that runs every Monday morning and looks for your currently quarantined files and dumps them to some log file. Well, you can't run cron jobs on Gaddy. I do have another question about MDSS. Yep. I haven't used it in like a shamefully long time because it used to be so abhorrent. Like there was no sort of, it was impossible to find anything on there and like to pull it back out and stuff. And like, is, is this still a fair assessment of, like it was just really like, you didn't know where it went and you didn't know what was there and how to get it out. I mean, yeah, it wasn't like a, a file browser you could find to use to see, hey, that's what I put on MDSS and that's what I can pull out. It was just like some mystery black box that you kind of had to remember what you chucked into. And I think, I think it's not that bad uh, because you can run, there's an MDSS command, you can run MDSS LS. So it gives you an LS command on, on there. And so you can, you can go through the directory tree and find what's going on. So I should try again. Um, but I, I, I don't think, think it's changed, but that doesn't mean that Claire isn't right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think it's still a little bit elish though, because you have to basically less explicitly every single directory. So you kind of have to go through each level, you have to repeat the LS common. Although um, Aiden, you did write some stuff that helped, some tools there. 
L2A and DSS. So. I mean, yeah, is anybody here actively putting stuff on too? MDSS and pulling it back off, or is it more like a forever storage? Is anyone actively using MDSS, really? No, uh, no time like, like the present, I guess. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's a sign of it not being functional, I guess, but I would argue. Define actively using. Well, like it's a backup system, is, or is it, it's a system for archiving. You put you generally, if you want to archive something, you put it in the archive and then you go away. Um, for, forever. <laughs> yeah. I think like it, a, yeah, I think it would require some um, some thought uh, and and if you have your own sort of system for how you might do those things, right? But um, yeah, I mean, I did write the MDSS diff tool, which um, was designed to basically it was designed so that you could do MDSS put minus R, put a whole directory tree. And if, even if it, if it died at some point, or you could just, you could satisfy yourself that everything was where we had been copied over correctly, that the MDSS diff. But I added some very rudimentary syncing to it so that you could uh, then up, if not everything was copied correctly, you could get it to copy it, copy what was left, what hasn't been copied already. And, um, and it also has the ability to pull things back over that aren't, that aren't exist, don't exist on the local directory. So it's not a great, it's not a great tool, it's a bit slow, but you could use it like that if, you know, so for example, you could keep a directory structure on G data, but not have the data files in it. And then you could use MDSS diff and copy from remote and copy um, uh, data files back in that, that exist on the, on the mass data store, but aren't on G data. And then when you're finished with them, you can just do an RM, you know, you can just remove everything that's called .nc or whatever, as long as you know how, it's, how it works. It is possible. I mean, and I can help, you know, we can help think up ways of doing those sorts of things. Um, but, you know, it, it just depends on what you want to do. But I think it's possible. And, and it also depends on how you structure your, um, your files to be uh, archived. So the best thing really is to have everything tiny and small, just all in, t in archives within each directory, say, and leave the data files, if they're large enough, just uh, as they are, and then you're pulling over relatively small amounts at a time. Uh, it's, it is doable. Uh -huh. We can work up an example use case, for example, if, if you want to, and we could document it. I mean, part of the reason I haven't necessarily written all this down is that no one's really done it yet. So I haven't had a, a use, you know, haven't had an example, a concrete example to, to do it with. Um, Claire, did we just want to mention to be particularly careful if you're away um, for yes. a prolonged holiday and that was that was the other thing. Um, if you're away for three days, you know, five, fourteen days is not a long time. Uh, if you are going for six months to Antarctica, for example, uh, don't leave anything on scratch behind you. Before you need to clean your scratch before leaving. Uh, if you're going on parental leave, you probably want to clean up your scratch as well. If you're doing anything like that, uh, there will be some cases there. You have to be careful if you're going away for more than 100 days, uh, clean up your scratch completely before going. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to say today probably as well is if you know anyone that is currently away, uh, on parental leave, for example, or anything else, uh, don't hesitate to contact them to tell them they need to they need to get onto the machine as up and 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 get ready for it, mm -hmm. um, because nobody else can do it for them. So, as we said, it's uh, every user needs to do their own deal with their own uh, files. I am going to warn the CIs as well that they should think about the teams and who's not here and who might need to, to have a personal tap on, to, on the shoulder that they might need, they have something important to deal with, but yeah. Yeah, this is, this is actually important. If, you are, if, if your project re, uh, relies on someone else's data on scratch, that is highly dangerous. 
because you will not get any warning that was if the files disappear and when they do you have no no option of of taking them back out of recovery so um i strongly urge you to um make sure those files are copied um over to to gdata or somewhere where they're more safe if you if you don't if, if you don't own the files um they might be gone from under you without any without any trace Okay. Um, any other questions? No? Um, yeah. Oh, just quickly, sorry. Um, so let's, I guess an example would be if I had an experiment that I've run and I had a bunch of data from that. And so, I, okay, I'll have to analyze it and I'll move it to GData because this is important and I want to keep it. But let's say I want to go back and we and run a few more years or something does that in my configuration that will still go to scratch but it doesn't affect the file structure would it have an error because of the restart files or something like that that i'm not entirely sure how that works or we can talk offline if so the restart files would need to be on scratch that they would need to be at the location where the model expects it ex expects them to be um i it, everything else probably depends on your on your model so um I mean, most models produce a lot of output that they that the model itself then never needs again. So if you copy that over to to GData, everything will be fine. Um, I would probably also um, copy um, a few restart dumps, not all of them, but a few restart dumps over to GData. If you could, if you think about whether you might ever want to rerun this model or or uh, want to continue running this model or want to make some modifications to some things. Just a few restart dumps to make sure we can restart. We can restart them again, but they, those those restart files would probably then have to be copied back to scratch before the model can before you can run the model again. I think Holger's correct. Ollie, uh, so Ellie's running um, Access OM two models, right? I'm on six. I'm on six. Okay. Well, um, so so the so um, uh, Andrew Kish has got um, sync scripts in, as part of the Access OM two. Um, standard configurations and th those are the sort of things that people are going to have to adapt and put into their workflows for example um, so I can show you how to where that's done but uh, Paiyu has uh, has the capability to automatically sync data to gdata you know, um, if you put this the right script in the right place and reference it in the right in the correct way so um, you know we can certainly go through those sorts of options it may be that because it's worth having a, a separate session on for specific models for how to do these sorts of things i don't know that's a possibility as well yeah because like i guess an example would be i i would plan to just migrate the entire experiment file the, like the important experiments i want to keep from scratch to the data but i don't know if that is reason that is reasonable in terms of space or like for example if even if i delete the diagnostic files that i don't need anymore i don't know if that makes sense yeah, I mean, um, uh, you go, yeah, I mean, you're going to be copying them to E14, are you? Uh, or E45, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's a discussion you have to have with uh, the CIs of those those groups, basically. And and um, to be frank, it's also a discussion you have to have with your colleagues, right? Um, if yeah. if you if there are some people who are, who are taking an outsized amount of space, they have to justify it to to the people in the desk next door. Um, and if they can't, then you know they need to clean it up. Um, yeah, so because we need it to be was that. We all need to be a bit more collegiate, potentially. Yeah, yeah. As I was wondering if, like, it's if that is something that I need to think about doing, or just copying the prognostic files that I want. But that's a different situation. Yeah, I don't know what. It just depends, I guess. Um, if you have very specific needs, only very very few diagnostic files, then yeah, only output those ones, I suppose. But um, these are the things where maybe it's best just to send an email to CWS help, and um, and we can we can talk talk you through it, I guess. Um, but it's certainly one of the first things you need to know is how much how much data you're producing, how quickly, over what time frame, how long do you need to keep it. You need to have, have think about those sorts of things uh, and bring that information um, to us and the CIs and all the CIs. Yeah, I I guess 
it, we can't stress enough how, before you move stuff to Gdata, be um, not just consider about others. Sometimes you just have to move some of the stuff, and that's fine. But there's a lot that you really don't need to move, and there's also consideration in terms of the number of files. So the inodes which are allowed on Scratch, which is kind of the actual number of files and directory, is much higher than the one in Gdata. So you could even need limits um, before you actually consume the storage if you have a similar. Uh, you know, a huge number of logs and restarts files and things like that. So it, it's about just being sensible and clean up and consult um, clearly with, you know, the project leader before you move huge amounts. And, and yeah, and ask for help if you're in doubt. But I, I think the blog also, and this, it's not the only place actually, on the, and there's various places in the wiki where we suggest strategies on how to uh, review your model output, you know, and make it more um, reasonable. Compression, for example, um, things like that can save a lot of storage too. Okay, it's 3 p.m. Um, is there any more questions or should we wrap it up? I've seen quite a few people already left, so. Okay, well, let us know if you have more questions coming. Uh, let us know, we'll, as I said, we'll update information depending on questions as well. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much for coming and um, see you around. Bye. Yep. Yeah.